Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be giving you five classic book recommendations. I feel like this is going to be quite a quick rapid fire type book recommendations video because while I can recommend you books these have already been talked about so so much so what else is there to say? I don't know but I feel like classics are presented and built up to be this really daunting thing and honestly they're really on it's just the way that society presents them on a pedestal really obviously some of them do come across as really dense and tedious to read but they're not all like that so I thought I'd recommend you some of my favourites. This is where you very quickly realise that I like gothic classics, but let's just get started. So the first one I'm going to recommend is actually an ancient Greek text. You guys tend to ask me for recommendations on where to start with Greek mythology and everything to that effect, but I'm not quite ready to make that video yet, so I thought I would just put one recommendation in here, and that one is Jason and the Golden Fleece, otherwise known as the Argonautica, by Apollonius of Rhodes. Now this one is actually quite often dubbed as the smaller version of the Odyssey, I guess. It does have a lot of parallels and that's the reason why I'm recommending it, because while the Odyssey is my favourite, and I do quite often recommend that as a starting place for Greek mythology, this one is considerably shorter and a lot less intimidating if you don't want to jump into a 400 page voyage, I guess. <laughs> So the plot of this one is fairly simple. Jason is sent on a quest to find the Golden Fleece. But like with Odysseus, Jason does come across a lot of trials along the way. Every time he stops at an island, there's a new problem. And in this one, we do actually meet the fan favourite that is Medea, who is a witch and quite a villainous one at that. So I feel like that would be a nice thing for people to read about if they're just getting into it. I really enjoyed it when I read it. I feel like this encompasses so much of what I love about Greek mythology. So I would highly recommend this one if you haven't already read it. One which is a favourite of so many people is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. But I personally have not mentioned this in a very, very, very long time, but I do really like it and I actually want to reread it. So this this is the story of Dorian Gray who manages to capture his life within a painting. His aging years and injuries and things like that are all put into the painting rather than affecting his physical body but this does end up leading to a spiraling descent into violence and cruelty. If you like the current trend of dark academia then this is a really good one to go for because there is a huge emphasis on the appreciation for art and this very privileged lifestyle having lots of money to spend on things like art, lots of meaningful conversations and that kind of thing so I feel like this is a lot of people's favourite for a very good reason and I would definitely take up that recommendation if you don't really know where to go with classics, if you're feeling like reading one and if definitely if you're in the gothic mood because like I said this does have a kind of spiralling descent and a creeping sense of something going to go wrong all the way through it so it's really interesting to witness that and yeah I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Next up is one which feels a bit premature to be recommending this one, but just to get it out there, I really recommend A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Writings from Charles Dickens. This is one of the most well-known stories because it's pretty much one of the only actually written down Christmas stories that is widely spread every single year. I had this whole crisis last year where I wanted to read this book again, basically. I wanted a Christmas story that was like this book and it just doesn't really exist. For Christmas stories, you have romance or crime. There's nothing really like this that I did manage to find a few short story collections that were similar. They just didn't pull through quite as much as this one did because this one, not only do we have the very famous story of A Christmas Carol in which you have the three ghosts of Christmas and Ebenezer Scrooge and this kind of luring sense of gothic in the background of Christmas, but it does also have other Christmas writings as well which very much follow within the same theme so they're all kind of creepy and gothic and a little bit supernatural you never quite know what's going on and they all definitely suit the collection I guess it was really really good I love reading this because of course A Christmas Carol is so familiar but then the rest of them just provided a new sense of haunting Christmas stories I don't know it was a really nice experience and ever since then I've always recommended it obviously I didn't love all of them I feel like with a lot of short story collections there's always one or two that you just kind of like okay that was fine but the other ones were better but I feel like especially for the month of December and the run up to Christmas this is actually a really good book to be reading I don't know it was just both comforting but also kind of creepy perfect vibes for curling up next to your Christmas tree with a blanket and just the ultimate storytelling mode I guess <laughs> 
Next up we have a book which I would consider one of my favourite classics and that is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. All of these Penguin classics are just reflecting my ring light at you, I do apologise. <laughs> this one again is a gothic classic and really really tiny actually. I've just noticed it says on the back that Oscar Wilde calls this book a most wonderful, lurid, poisonous little tale which is kind of funny considering we've just mentioned him. But I feel like that's exactly right because this book follows a woman who is a governess and she goes to this big old manor house to look after two children, teach them, but she soon comes to believe that these two children are being haunted and she believes that they're in danger. And this book is very much just about her experience trying to take care of these children. I feel like any gothic story with children involved is just immediately heightened in terms of spookiness. <laughs> But this is just a really clever book and it's one of those where you don't even realise until things come to light and all of a sudden everything clicks into place and you're just like, what? But also just the general atmosphere in this, you never quite really know what's going on. You do have the typical ghost story vibes of this big manor house and sometimes you'll be comfortable and then all of a sudden everything is flipped over onto its head because someone is just lurking behind the window or something. It's just really everything you could possibly want within a ghost story basically and I love this book so so much. I reread it immediately after reading it because I did write an essay for it so that is partially why but also just because there's so many theories and stuff you can come up with regarding this book and it's just really fun to read in that respect as well so yeah I fell head over heels for this book, really really loved it and I will always recommend it whenever people ask for a classic or gothic or even vaguely dark book recommendation. <laughs> and then finally we do have another gothic book but this one is a parody of the gothic and I'm sure if you are familiar with classics at all you will know which one I'm about to hold up because this one is No Thunder Abbey by Jane Austen. This one is as I said a parody of gothic so while it does have the Jane Austen sense of everything being prim and proper and polite and about relationships and societal standing and all that fun stuff this one is also just mocking gothic themes. So in this one our main character is obsessed with reading and she very much gets too far involved in all of the gothic novels that she's reading and she starts seeing her own life as if it's told through a gothic novel. So she overreacts to everything, she starts just putting the most wild stories behind people's intentions and anything they say she reads too far into it, tries to build this bigger story than there actually is Obviously that gets her into some kind of trouble and it's just really fun to read when you know that it is actually mocking that because I feel like as readers we kind of relate. I'm sure at some point we've all definitely felt the need to make our lives feel as if we're living some kind of grand fictional story and this main character does exactly that so this is actually my favourite Jane Austen book. I have read all of her novels quite a while ago now but this one remains to this day my favourite one and the one that I will always remember the fondest, so yeah. So these are my five classic book recommendations. As I said, short and sweet, and actually all of the books also ended up being short. Maybe not so sweet though. Do let me know if you have any classic books that you would recommend. I have read quite a few, not for a while, so I haven't mentioned any in a while, but I do have quite the classics collection. And I do actually plan on doing at some point a classic bookshelf tour because I do have them separate from the rest of them, so let me know if you would be interested in seeing that and I shall see what I can do. But those are the ones that I wanted to chat about today, so yeah, let me know if you've read them, let me know if you have any recommendations for me. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other booky stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.